Well, then he took his fingers and placed them underneath my pecs and then squeezed down on them. So he went and basically like pinched my pecs while I was breathing. And I, it hurt. I shouted. And then... <laughs> And then it just, ooh, it's like almost a coughing. <laughs> Crying is like a cough. Crying is like an orgasm, right? You have an orgasm, you know that pulsation feeling that you have? Um, coughing produces the same sort of movement. Yo, Elliot. Uh, yo, Elliot. I had a weird experience on Saturday. I woke up real dizzy like I've been drinking, but it never happened before. On reflection, I think I was having anxiety problems and I'm looking after myself now and feeling better. He says, but I did miss the early signing, uh, warning signs. The last six months have been testing as well as the restrictions and frustrations we've all faced. I started my own business and my wife got made redundant. I'm feeling the strain, emotionally supporting her, clients and family members, and also pushing myself and what I need to do. I remember several times in the last week feeling dizzy. I felt like crying, but I really, but I want to, I want to cry, but I struggle and can't remember the last time I did. Probably lots of childhood conditioning or big boys don't cry. Have you got any tips on accessing the emotions to I need to release? Um, I've scheduled the weekend to fast. Hope that will peel back a layer. Fasting will absolutely peel back a layer. And here's the thing. Here's a, a, something about fasting in terms of emotional release and peeling back the layer. Just emotional release in general that I've discovered uh, in my years of doing this kind of stuff is that not all emotional release has to be cathartic in nature. Meaning it doesn't have to be a big letdown, but big letdowns are like orgasms and they feel so good. It's like it's like breaking a dam and letting all that's been trapped out. Though, it can be softly released. And I've discovered that because uh, I've found that just by practicing open body breathing, I teach this in some of my YouTube videos, wide open mouth, because the mouth, the jaw is really what holds back our tears, the jaw and the heart. These two areas hold, hold our sadness. The heart becomes hard and the jaw becomes clenched. Let me tell you a little story about the first time I, I broke down in sobbing through bioenergetics. And it was a, it was a, it was a massive catharsis. catharsis. Um, the reason why I was saying to you, before I get into that, the reason why I was telling you that it doesn't have to be a massive catharsis is because we could become addicted to searching for that big catharsis that big release and it does feel good but it also is not necessary if you're consistent because you can slowly just open up and release uh little by little let it just trickle out little by little rather than having a big wow um but i had a big bah! and maybe you will too um the first thing is this that I was working with a bioenergetic analyst who was highly skilled and trained by Alexander Lowen himself, had been in practice for like 50 years. The guy knew exactly what he's doing. And I could tell you there's a lot of guys out, there's not many practitioners out there like this. There's not many bioenergetic practitioners that are legit out there. Most of them are fugazi, so much so that I even did a session with a very famous bioenergetic Practitioner. I'm not going to say his name, but his last name's Lowen. I'll give you a hint. Um, he wasn't very good. He wasn't very good at all. <laughs> I was a little shocked. I was like, wow, really? You? You're not, you're not very good at all. But when I was working with Bob Glazier, he was amazing, and he had multiple skills, um, one of which was he understood the muscular system, which I think is key when it comes to bioenergetic release. Now, remember what I said before, the heart and the jaw hold back sobbing those are the two areas first time i broke down i blasted out some big old sobs was probably the second session i did with him it might have been yeah it was probably it was the second session i did with him and i'll tell you exactly what happened what i did and this may or may not be of value to you but you can glean some points from my experience first there's lots we did a lot of open mouth breathing 
So you lay on your bed, you lay on your back, bend your knees upright so your feet are flat, hands over your belly, and you focus on breathing into your belly because your belly is the pump. Your, your solar plexus is actually the pump, but when you breathe into your belly, your solar, and when I say breathe into your belly, I'm talking about breathing into your balls. Breathe down as low as you can. The belly, the um, solar plexus, when you push your belly out with your breathing, the solar plexus drops even lower. So the lower you can breathe into your belly, the, the more you're putting a stretch on the solar plexus. And that's really what we're going for. We're going for a, for a big opening, a big dropping of the solar plexus. That's how you get a deep breath. You start there. And Bob Glazier had a method where he would work his way up. He said, always begin down low. Work down low. So you're here. You got the jaw. It's, he called it relaxed, but it doesn't feel relaxed because at first there's a lot of resistance. And you want to breathe that way. So you got your hands over your belly and you're breathing into your belly, making your belly big doing this. And you just keep working that way. If you're looking for a pattern, I think uh, Wim Hof has a, he's got a little app that just times your breathing. You could even just do it the way I'm showing you right now. Wim Hof doesn't teach it that way. But if you follow the Wim, Sh Wim Hof like app that just, he even, has a, he even has YouTube videos just like, inhale, exhale. This is what he does. So he can just keep you on rhythm. You don't need it. You, you, can, you, you can keep your own rhythm. You can even get like one of those apps that keep rhythm like when you're on a, um, piano i forget what they call it but you can listen to that video you listen to wim hof and he'll carry you through the breathing do it the way i'm telling you which is key open your mouth open your eyes even right lay the way i showed you and breathe into your belly start just down low and keep it focused on the belly and so we spent a long time doing that man like if you don't have a coach it's tough um, because I would have given up. He just had me, he just kept going. He, he would just say, in, out. This is what Bob Glazier used to do too. And he would just keep me breathing with it, keep going with it, keep going with it. And then, I guess because he was watching my body, he would recognize where the blocks are. And I can, because I spent so much time doing it, I could feel where the blocks are. A metronome. Thank you, Jonathan. I feel where the blocks are. Um, after a certain amount of time, of breathing that way, he, he just noticed, and this is so key because there's a difference between di different type of bioenergetic therapists, and I've worked with many of them, and they didn't have this kind of keen notice. They would try to force it. He would notice, okay, well, there's a block in the heart, or there's a block in the solar plexus. He would notice where you're not, you know, as the breath just starts taking over, he would notice where that wave is blocked, right? Because your body actually waves when you breathe. He used to call it the orgastic wave. Right. So there would be a block and then he would go and he would attack that block. And I remember when he, the first time he attacked the block in my heart. So here I am, I'm breathing wide open mouth. You know, my jaw, he had, he had also worked attack blocks on my jaw too, by pressing hard on these. Ah, but there was more rage. Rage is trapped in the head. So when he would press on my jaw, it would release the, because the jaw muscles are like all the way up in here. And it would release ah, rage. But this day, I was breathing into my belly and he took his fingers and then he worked into what he called the car. He said it was your, your um, he told me it was my cardio, cardio fascia, the fascia around the cardi, cardiac fascia, something like that. But then he took his fingers and placed them underneath my pecs and then squeezed down on them. So he went and basically like pinched my pecs while I was breathing. And I, it hurt. I shouted. And then. <laughs> and then it just. It's like almost a coughing. <laughs> Crying is like a cough. Crying is like an orgasm. <laughs> Right? You have an orgasm, you know that pulsation feeling that you have? Um, coughing produces the same sort of movement. So you kind of break that up. And broke up that, broke up that 
block within that pattern and the sobbing just came through bro i wish i could refer you to somebody to help with that i thought i was going to be able to do that for people and i did for a while and i'm and i got pretty good at it um but i became overwhelmed maybe maybe one day maybe i'll go back to it maybe i'll be able to provide it for people but it was overwhelming for me i and i realized like maybe i shouldn't be doing this right because it takes a lot of time a lot of energy and a lot of you got to be you got to be you got to be that kind of person and i'm more of a strength coach than a than a tender coach you got to be tender and be tender and aggressive I'm not, i don't know if i'm tender enough to deal with people on that level here's this grown man crying i could do it but i don't think i'm built for it so uh resources brian's asking resources on uh bioenergetics just read everything alexander lowen wrote read all his books it'll help you understand but understanding it is not the same as experiencing it and so when i said earlier that you could do this without a huge catharsis you can and that is a matter of just practicing the breathing without trying to force anything and if you do that breathing every day you got to make because the blocks are are so they're so frozen into your muscular system that you got to do it every day to help melt a little bit. You'll have tiny releases. If you just focus, say, 20 minutes a day on this breathing. And even if you don't have somebody there that will recognize the blocks, if you trust your body, because a lot of times when I would work with people, I would say, okay, what do you feel there? And Glazier used to do this to me too. I'd say, what do you feel you need to move? And sometimes I'd be like, I just feel like I need to move my hands. There's a block in the arms, right? And the arms are associated with the heart. So usually if there's a block in the arms, there's a block in the hands, there's a block in the heart. Also, you teach me how to do, throw a temper tantrum. There's a legitimate way to throw a temper tantrum, believe it or not. There's a scientific way to throw a temper tantrum. And it's a coordination of the arm and leg, right? Right arm, left. It's a cross curl pattern with the head moving. And then you pick up steam. Keep the breathing deep. Pick up steam. Until you exhaust yourself. And you'll just, because you're so exhausted and because you're so worked up from that movement, that movement, it's a twisting movement that unravels a lot of blocks, right? So it's pumping and twisting. Boom. You may get a, you may get a release. You may not. But you don't have to force the release. You just commit to the movement. You commit to the breathing. That's really all it is, man. That's all real bioenergetics is. We can go, it could get deep. And, I ha and I'm kind of on the fence about it these days. I just don't know. Maybe I need to pray about it. There's a lot of value in it, but it needs to be treated tenderly. And I know when I was first learning about it and just being the way I am, I wasn't treating it tenderly and I became inflated. If it's not contained, if a person who's being unzipped in that way, because when you start doing bioenergetics, you're, what Bob Glazer used to say to me, Dr. Glazer used to say to me, is that you're you're unzipping someone's unconscious, and you have to know how to contain that. You literally you need a you need a, a a strong, healthy person that can that can contain help another individual contain that, and a, you need to be very grounded. Otherwise, uh, like what happened to me, infantile grandiosity takes over, and I I, I even watch myself. I go back and watch some of my videos. I can see exactly where my inflation started, and I watch right where it popped. And bioenergetics had a lot to do with it. I believe that it can open you up just as much as it helps you release. As you open up to release things, if it's not treated with respect, it will also it can open you up to demonic oppression. The demons can infiltrate that much easier when you're inflated because you know the warfare warfare spiritual warfare happens in the mind, and you start feeling good about yourself or not even good about yourself, you start processing, that's what it is, start processing these unresolved emotions that come to the surface as they've been blocked and trapped in there for, you know, sometimes 10, 20, 30 years. You forget who you are 
and you start to think you're those emotions. Either that or like what happened to me, you start feeling so damn good because you because, you know, you, you start to cleanse yourself and wash yourself. That like Jesus says, there's this one there's this one uh, saying where Jesus says to his disciples, he's talking about demonic warfare. He's talking about demonic oppression. And he says, well, because a lot of this stuff is demonic, like when, you know, these de these uh, traumas open the door for demonic for the demonic. And so he says that when you clear out a demon from the house he says like pretend like that person is a house you clear out like you sweep them out you're like get out of here get out of here bah. and you clear that demon out of the house if you don't set that house back in order right that demon's gonna come back with 10 of his friends so in other words you gotta you have to you have to kick that demon out you gotta lock the door and you gotta clean up that space Otherwise, if you just kick them out and you leave the door open and you don't really like fix, you know, amend your life, that demon's going to come back with, he's going to come back with 10, 10 more demons that's just as bad or worse. This is what Jesus says. And that's why it's, you know, he was like telling his disciples to go and heal in my name, but also you got to teach people to repent. What good is it to, to, to kick these demons and to kick this trauma if you're not amending your life? And you're not you're not uh, you're not reverent towards this, and respectful towards this entire process. It's kind of like an exorcism in a lot of ways. Bioenergetics is kind of like an exorcism in a lot of ways. It's not a legitimate exorcism, but I think that if someone's doing it, I think the I used to say that the best practitioner would be the bioenergetic analyst that also understands um, uh, biomechanics. Somebody who, who who's who's a soft tissue worker. But also can, but also knows the the, the breathing work because really all it is is breathing and body work. It's all it is, all it really is. But because the psyche is involved, it then becomes spiritual warfare. And so, I think you also need someone who understands deliverance. And I'm just brainstorming here with you right now, and I'm ranting, but. These are things that need to be considered, and I'm even considering as I'm speaking them. I'm like, maybe that's what God was making me hold off on. He's like, I needed to be prepared and even come to understand that this is this is demonic warfare. Bioenergetics is demonic warfare. It's 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 spiritual warfare. It really is done through the body, just like any um, just like an exorcism. So I might need to pray on that one. Whew, I don't know, but that's. That's my answer to that, uh, my man. Your dizziness perhaps is a form of that block, right? Because this is what Wilhelm Reich discovered is that all neurotic holding patterns, as he would call it, which are basically muscular holding patterns that are... Uh, representative of psychological or, or um, defense mechanisms, psychological defense mechanisms that manifest themselves physically. They're all, they're all designed to block breathing because breath is life. And as you block breathing, you, blo you, block, you block feeling. You block breathing, you block freeing, uh, feeling. <laughs> and that's a block against life. And that's why one of my favorite Lowen books is Fear of Life. So that's it, man. There's, there's a lot more there to it. Listen, just for your own maintenance and your own, you know, well-being, just practice open, open front breathing. <sighs> 20 minutes a day. Don't make anything of it. Don't overthink it. Don't try to make it more than it is. Try to keep the breath deep and consistent, solid rhythm, and maybe follow a Wim Hof video where he helps, because he's got them on YouTube where you, he keeps you on a pattern, or using a metronome to keep yourself on pattern. And uh, I, think you'll, I think you will resolve softly and slowly over time some of those blocks. I know it's been working for me. I've been doing, of course, you know, I did intense bioenergetics for many years, uh, you know, between 2012 and 2015, 16. Um, since then, I've been on and off, but lately, 
I've been using the bioenergetic stool a lot. This would be helpful to for you too. Watch some of my YouTube videos on the bioenergetic stool. Use the bioenergetic stool uh, and just practice some open mouth breathing um, over the stool because it puts it puts more of a stretch on those muscles and it helps open that up. And your breathing is easier. And when your breathing's easier, your feelings are are more grounded. So that's it. Cameron wants advice on being consistent with with the breathing. Bro, being consistent with with the breathing is like being consistent with anything. It's like brushing your teeth, right? How do you be consistent with brushing your teeth? You wake up and brush your fucking teeth. <laughs> I hope that helps, dude. I'm done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot Hulse here. And I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent sessions with my King Transformation students, where among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week and we speak on things related to becoming kings in our lives. If that sounds like you, and you're interested in joining a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word king, K-I-N-G, and me and my team will get back to you with the details to see if you qualify to join us. I hope to see you at our next meeting. Done.